Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another one here. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at the required servo torque that we need for our radio controlled airplane control surfaces. So whether it be ailerons, elevator, or your rudder, these are common surface areas that need to have a specific amount of torque to operate them correctly. Let's go through a bit of the information that we will require. So one of the bits of information that we will have to get from our airplane is the actual size of the control surface. We can do that simply by measuring it ourselves. All we need to do is grab some sort of measuring device and measure that specific control surface. You want to get the length of the control surface and the cord of the control surface. So essentially this works out to be the length and the width of it. Now the calculator is going to accept a metric unit of input. So if you do have an imperial dimension, just convert that over into the metric system and you'll have your dimensions to input into the calculator. Let's head over to the whiteboard to go through the rest of the equation on how all this works and then we'll go and take all the information that we have and throw it right into the calculator available on the website. Now that we know the size of our working control surface, we're going to go and record those dimensions and convert them over to the metric system. 3 inches working out to 7.62 centimeters and 25 and a half inches working out to about 65 centimeters. This would be the core direction which I consider as the width as well and this would be the length of your control surface and this would work for the typical aileron, rudder and elevator control surfaces. And then when you move on to the dimensions here for angle, this is going to be input into the actual calculator that you'll see very shortly. When it comes to the servo, there's an angle that the servo is going to go through in order to reach maximum control deflection. That's the angle that you're looking for from the center point. Then the next one that you're looking for is the angle that the actual control surface goes through. So in this case, our control surface, I've measured it out, it does about 18 millimeters in the direction for your elevator and the if you can work out the trigonometry on the triangle you don't need to actually go and measure it with a protractor or any other angular device there you can just work out what it is for 76.2 uh, millimeters in one direction versus the 18 millimeters in the other direction you'll get somewhere around 14 to 15 degrees since the calculator currently only accepts increments of five degrees up to about 65 degrees. We're going to go and round this up to be conservative to 15 degrees. This is going to give us some mechanical advantage because our servo is going to rotate a significant amount relative to the actual control surface only moving in 15 degrees at a maximum. Now the only thing remaining about this exact situation is the flight speed of the aircraft. This is important. Obviously, the faster you fly, the higher the torque amount that you're going to require from that servo. Let's assume this jet flies at a maximum of 300 kilometers per hour. That should be quite conservative. I do believe the maximum that that jet is able to hit is somewhere in the 260 kilometers an hour range, so 300, you always want to give a little bit more just to make everything conservative. That's why we're always rounding up when appropriate and rounding down when appropriate. So the servo, the more that this is able to move, the better off you're going to be. So here, you, to be conservative, you actually have to round down, where here, to be conservative, you round up. When it comes to the control surface itself, obviously rounding up to resemble a larger control surface is going to be more conservative. So now let's take all this information and throw it right into the calculator. All right, we're here at the last step. We hover over the information tab, hover over RC airplane calculators, and then we want to select the RC airplane calculator. The first calculator on this page is where we are going to calculate the required servo torque for our control surface. All we do here now is enter in all the information that we went through previously. Our top speed of the aircraft is 300 kilometers an hour. The core dimensions that, that we're going to use today is 7.62 centimeters. The length of that control surface is 65 centimeters. The servo can deflect 40 degrees. This is a drop down menu with options available. And the surface deflection that we have here is 15 degrees. And that is for the elevator 
of that jet. So now the last thing that we do here is calculate the servo torque. We're gonna get the required servo torque as well as the recommended servo torque. So I submit that form and we arrive at 97.2 ounce inches or seven kilogram centimeters. This would be uh, the required torque and then the recommended torque is 126.4 ounce inches or 9.1 kilogram centimeters. So whichever unit of measurement you would prefer, both are there for you. Now keep in mind there is a little bit of a multiplier in order to get the recommended amount of servo torque. Just in case any of these values are off, having more servo torque, you usually can't go wrong. Other than the expense of the power required to turn that servo is going to be higher and the weight and size of the servo may also be higher. It really does pay to a little bit oversize your servo so that you don't run into any stall conditions with the servo. You at all costs want to avoid that condition. And once you have the required servo torque and the recommended torque, now you can go ahead, select that servo for your application. Well, that pretty well wraps it up for this video. Whether you're trying to confirm specifications in your instruction sheet of your airplane, or you've just built your own airplane and trying to get a ballpark value, this calculator is gonna allow you to get that result. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.